Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be taking a look at an SLI bridge. How exciting! But don't tune out just yet because you do need to see what we're going to be doing. Now, a few manufacturers recently have been bringing out dedicated SLI bridges. Whether this is going to get carried on into the next generation of graphics cards, no one knows yet. But the fact um, MSI have released their so close to an impending change makes me believe that we may still end up using these. So there are other brand versions out there and they're not exactly massively necessary, no, but once you've spent a fair bit of money buying uh, your graphics cards and planning on going dual, triple or even quad graphics if you um, are made of money and deaf, then uh, there's why not have something rather than just a plain old uh, uh, ribbon cable you can have something really meaty and nice on there the MSI one that I've got here comes in a triple and a quad version and it actually has a little fan on it as well so I've unboxed the uh, the quad one and we have that to show you in a little minute so stay with us but with the uh, triple one it's pretty much the same the, literally the difference is the pin out on the back which I'll show you a picture of but when you do open the box, you are actually greeted with something rather nice and uh, different to other SLI bridges. You do end up with a fan that you can bolt on as well. The, when I can get it out. There we go, right. So we have a rather nice SLI bridge here. And if I show you the back, you can see that it's uh, you get a gap, but then you have the two ones right at the very bottom. Um, most motherboards, I'm assuming, with the uh, the MSIs are going to end up getting laid out this way. It does mean that the two um, bridges at the bottom are very close. But the most important thing is when you get round to, to the other side. Obviously, MSI gaming stuff is very black and red orientated, so you've got some uh, anodized aluminium at either end. The uh, logo in the middle does light up and you've got little um, bits where the light can protrude on either end. And the, uh, the fan uh, carrier can bolt onto the side and get moved up and down. It does come with a slimline fan as well. And you can slide it about so you can get it in the right position. And it's got some little standoffs and the fan can um, uh, direct some, have some direct airflow going on to your uh, graphics. We will talk about the, um, the performance of said fan in a moment. But the most important thing was, is MSI come to me and they said, Tom, we would like you to make a video. And I was like, right, okay. What about? And they said, well, we'll just send you a box and you can just rock with it and get on with it. So I was like, okay. So we ended up with one 980, two 980, three 980, four 980s turning up. And then to put it all on, we ended up with a godlike carbon as well. And then I did this. So essentially what we did is I posted on Facebook to see what people would actually like it put in. So it went out to a bit of a public vote and the uh, decision came down in the end that people either wanted to see the 760T or the 780T from Corsair. 780T did end up getting a couple more votes. But uh, the 780T that I've got is literally just a plain vanilla. It's my original white review sample. But the uh, 760T that I've got is my uh, graphics card test system. We had it all custom graphics up. It was red, white, and black for the OC3D colors anyway. So we ended up popping it in. So we do have the X99 Godlike Carbon fitted underneath. We've got a 5960X in there. There's a uh, 16 gigabyte. Is it 16 gigabyte or 32? I can never remember with this kit. But anyway, it's uh, 3600 megahertz. Corsair Dominator Platinum, and I've got the red tops on those. I still don't know whether you're going to be able to buy the red tops individually, but you can get uh, red kits if you're interested in colour matching. AX1500i, although one of the things I will say about the performance is uh, you could, if you'd had enough of, um, uh, well, essentially, from the wall, it was pulling about 850 watts. So that just goes to show you that with four 980s, 
quite how much power these things can actually pull. I was amazed. Uh, and that was in uh, 4K with all of the textures and everything absolutely wazzed right out. So we were literally stressing it as much as I can, as much as we could, and we didn't even get to 900 watts. So that should kind of put things out there. Just goes to show you how much an AX 1500i is uh, essentially overkill in this kind of environment. Uh, then we went with the uh, H105, and that's just because you've got the little red ring in the middle. Um, now the cables, I'll admit, uh, I didn't have enough of the red and black cables left. I've uh, sent cable mods a, a, an email to ask them if I can have a few more of the uh, standalone single PCI Express cables just so that I can uh, get a full set running because this, although it is overkill, 90% of the time that I use it, the AX1500i does just sit in this rig just for the times when I need it for this. Um, so that's really it. And MSI said to me, do that, see how you get on. Now, one of the things I will say is a lot of people are going to be asking me about temperatures. And temperatures with an add-on fan is going to be the main reason for doing it. And I will say that the, uh, the MSI fan is actually quite, uh, it's a slimline one. And it's uh, essentially, it's not really man enough to be able to squeeze air in between the four cards. It, it doesn't really make any difference at all. Now this is partially that the fan isn't particularly man enough, but there's also a feature with NVIDIA graphics cards called GPU Boost 2, where they overclock themselves uh, and you, you can essentially, I think it's, there's an 85 degree threshold and they'll basically just boost themselves as much as they can up to that 85 degree threshold, unless you go in and tell it that you'd prefer it to perform lower and then in which case it doesn't overclock itself as much or you can go in and manually set the fans yourself. Now, one of the things I would say, if you are going to run a massive bank of cards like this, I certainly wouldn't ever say to you just to leave it on uh, auto fan settings. Really, if you're going to run them on air to give them enough time to breathe, you really do need to have them at 100%. Now, with the um, Twin Frozer 5 cooler that the GTX 980 Gamings do come with, Amazingly, a 100% fan isn't as noisy as you may expect, but even then, once we tried it with auto fans and we tried it with uh, the um, fans turned up and this little fan on the side really didn't make any difference whatsoever. So it's one of the things where it's kind of, the thought process was definitely there in the fact that if you're going to be running a big bank of fans, then you, uh, you, you, and you're going to keep them on air, then you are going to need air. But the only way that you can really make any difference to fans like this is with an absolutely bonkers mental fan. And I'm talking the type of thing like the 3000 RPM Noctua server fans, or I've got a 220 CFM Delta, which is literally finger shredding style fan then you can make a slight difference on the card's temperatures but with something narrow like this because where it's only thin it doesn't really spin that hard in this kind of environment it's not really man enough to make any difference whatsoever so if you do end up buying the triple or the uh quad sli bridge from msi and you're going to be running it on air i can honestly say don't bother running the fan at all just turn the actual graphics cards fans up you'll get a much better temperature difference um, and to be honest with you, with the fan on the side, I would actually go as far as to say that uh, this spoils the look because I think without it and you just get to see the card, it's a much cleaner kind of look anyway. Now, uh, this, isn't this is because it's a quad SLI setup. If you had a single card on here and you were directing air you know, directly over a, um, a graphics card, then you may pick up some temperatures. Where they are all sandwiched in together, essentially the two middle ones are the hottest ones here. The bottom one doesn't do too badly. The top is uh, comes in second, but the two middle ones, you're looking at 85 to 90 degrees pretty much as soon as you hit anything with a 3D on this. Now, performance-wise, you're all going to be saying to me, God's sake, Tom, shut up talking. But just to chuck some numbers at you, although you can click the link to go to the Overclock 3D website, uh, Firestrike Ultimate was 10,717 and Firestrike Extreme was 18,145. Like I said, that's with the 5960X and 4980s. Um, many of you are going to be saying to me, why didn't they send you 980 tyres? Or well, maybe they didn't 
have them. Getting quite late in the day for this type of thing, but it was just something that I thought was pretty cool and we all like to see nice and spangly kit all kind of made up together. I love the fact that it does come with the little light up logo as well. But like I said, if this was going to be my rig and this was going to be the type of thing that uh, I would have been doing, I wouldn't have the fan on it if it was going to be air. But more, uh, the best thing that I can say with this is if you're going for MSI cards and you've got the money to kind of chuck at four MSI cards as well, get the bridge, yes, because it brings all the branding in together. But for the love of God, get yourself some water cooling. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with the uh, MSI X99 Mentalist Quadus Alloy stuff out.